it's 5 p.m. in the UK, it's 12 p.m. Eastern, and it's a bit later in Adelaide in Australia. And this is Talk Show with Stephen, and uh, it's good to get things underway. And Lauren is saying, as much as I'd love to join on camera, it's always too manic at this time of day. <laughs> I say hello to, well, I can appreciate that. Um, maybe do some shows later to fit in. But uh, say hello to RJ as well. Nice to see you here and looking forward to the show tomorrow, by which time I should have been recovered from my journey to Germany. More about which pretty darn soon. Uh, if you want to join me on camera, you're more than welcome to do so. All you need to do is type guest and you can join me on camera. And our friendly Bliff bot will send you the link to actually join us. And we say hello to Andy. Nice to see you, Andy, again. If you're watching, you're welcome to come on the show or to comment, and uh, that would be good. And uh, thank you. It's always nice to meet friends. One of the brilliant things about this live video networking is meeting friends. And it's basically because we've become a tight knit circle of people who've never met in real life, but we meet every week on live video. And I don't need to look if I'm live or not, because I know I am, because everybody's commenting. So I'm going to close that tab to save resources and come back to here. Now, uh, one of the things that um, I'd like to talk about today, if we can, which come twice in the last sort of 24 hours from people concerned about confidence on camera and broadcasting to a larger audience. When you broadcast on the on your own page, I do resemble him. I'm, I'm the post visit to Germany version. Thank you. Uh, so I may not be as quick as on my feet today as other days, but we'll get there eventually. Um, yeah, the question arose in the last sort of 24 hours a couple of times, uh, being confident on camera. Now, when you go live on your own page or in a group, you know who your audience are. When you go live on a live video hub, you're meeting new people. And that brings into question, well, but my point would be, and uh, Andy's just confirming he's in Starbucks. And uh, yes, we could entertain Starbucks, but I understand what you're saying. Uh, I'll catch you later. And But thanks for joining the show, Andy. Um, being nervous before a show is natural. Whether you've done four, 40 or 400 you're still going to have nerves before any show. And it's those nerves that actually get the show off to a good start. So that when you actually put up on screen, welcome to the show, you do it with some feeling and you get everybody involved from the get go. So I use channel those nerves to actually get through the first few minutes and start talking. And once I'm talking, then as most of you know, there is really no stopping me. And just to reiterate, um if you type guest you can join me on camera now you could be watching me on a, not necessarily the page i'm going live on i'm going on the live on the be live in five page if you look at the top of the post that you're watching from now you will see a link and that link is where i am if you want to comment live if you want me to see the comments but during the show they need to visit there if you want to have a private discussion, then you can have it with the people who join you on the live video hub or on uh, TVSN or basically US hub, uh, Little White Lie. We're going out on nine different pages today. And uh, this cross posting is actually working well. What we're finding is that audiences are good and stable and interested. Now, unusually today, I have an agenda and that agenda will allow me to do a screen share and tell you a story. And to start the story off, before I show you some pictures uh, taken by Angelica over the weekend, I'm the chairman of the Devisors Twinning Committee. The Devisors Twinning Committee is there to act as an interface between our town council in the town hall and 
the citizens of Devizes, of whom there are about 23,000 in total. Now those, <laughs> exactly, this is story time with Stephen. I'm gonna take you on a journey, okay? Bear with me, bear with me. This is breaking new ground. Um, so town twinning uh, came around in the 1960s um, and it was after obviously the Second World War and what they wanted to do was to strengthen ties between cities in Germany, France and England and Italy, uh, more of which later. So a council was set up, a governmental council set up to actually encourage people to twin. And in the 1960s, devisers, it was suggested, would twin with two places, Weiblingen in Germany, uh, and which is close to Stuttgart, and Mayenne in France, which is close to Rennes, if you know your French geography. Um, it's south of Paris. It's well south of Paris, but it's not as far as Lyon or anything like that. Um, and what happens is that every three years, we visit each other. So last year, everybody came to Devizes and we put together a program of events which starts on the Friday night and finishes on the Monday morning when everybody goes back home. So on Friday night, there's a welcome and you don't stay in hotels. This is the important part about twinning. When we visit Weimlingen, we stay with host families. And these are normal people who have an interest in twinning so we went and stayed with Zilka. I'll show you a picture of Zilka later. Uh, and Zilka is a counsellor in Birmingham. And we stayed with her and her family from Friday night through to Monday morning. And the story I'm about to tell you is what we actually happened over the weekend. So what happens on the training weekend? Now, I'm going to stay on screen. But if you want to go full screen, now would be a good time to do so. As we uh, say hello to Joe Myers. Uh, who's in Rochester, US, in, New, in New York, USA. Welcome, sir. I hope I got that right. Now, so I'm going to bring the pictures full screen. I would suggest that you go full screen as well. And there we are. And I'm going to talk you through them. Now, uh, the Feinbergen is situated, uh, as I said, near to Stuttgart. It's about an hour's drive away. So we flew into Stuttgart Airport on uh, Friday afternoon, and then we met in Weiblingen after a short coach ride by our hosts in the city. And as you can see, uh, they're having a festival next year. So this year, they're actually preparing for the festival, and they took us, or the mayor, Andreas Heskey, took us on a walk on the Saturday morning. Now, first thing that matters on a walk is meeting everybody. So there you have uh, people from England, France and Germany meeting together. Many of them have become friends over the years. The gentleman with the striped shirt is Simon. He's the uh, works for the council in devices. He organizes the English side of things and makes sure we get where we're supposed to be uh, on time. And then the man in the straw hat is Jasper, who was the previous chairman. And then you've got the French translator and then uh, Andreas Heskey, who is the mayor of Leimingen, and our good friend Isabel, who is from Mayen in France, and she's a councillor. So we all meet up, and then we go off on a little walk, and the walk is through a park that's been specially built for 2019, and the mayor said that he had actually arranged for the birds that we saw to be there. Now, when we went back in later in the day, they disappeared. So obviously uh, he worked his magic and got the birds, but the river runs through uh, Weimaringen and what they've done is to make it into a feature. So these two islands, uh, when the water level drops a bit, you'll be able to walk across from the seating area there to the island and then explore further. And there you have it. That's how it looks from the other side. Okay, so that's the in the park, just outside the city centre, and it's a very tranquil place to actually walk. And we had uh, with us, obviously, the people from France and from uh, Vagrin itself. Now, 
can you spot anything in this picture? If you look closely, and I hope you're full screen at the moment, otherwise you're going to miss it, you'll see the cattle, uh, which are wild cattle kept in the city centre. They're free to roam in the woods, and um, it's quite unusual to see that. The other thing which is very important to everybody is bees. Now, if bees disappeared within four years, we'd disappear too. Sad fact, we can't live without bees. So there is uh, the project to reintroduce bees to the park itself. And there is, as you can see, a transparent screen to actually have a look at the bees. Now, I'm just going to come back and see, oh, people are watching. Wow. Well, let me uh, bring the screen share up again. Uh, I'm going to share my screen again. I just came back to see whether anybody was here. Um, okay, so if you joined just, then we are on a twinning weekend in Weimlingen, and that's the people from Devizes in England who are actually visiting with uh, friends in Weimlingen in Germany. And this is the Saturday morning when we'd all arrived, and we're doing a grand tour of the Weimlingen area with the mayor of Weimlingen leading the way. And uh, let's continue the tour and then I'll come back. So, as I just said, bees are important and beekeeping is a skill uh, which we see uh, in being demonstrated during that particular morning. And as luck would have it, um, the Feuerwehr, which is the fire brigade, of course, uh, also proves we're in Germany because those are the first German words we've seen. Uh, we're actually doing some training in the park and they were practicing uh, two things. One is use of water hoses and the second is driving a fire engine. Now, these are youngsters who joined the service. This is the volunteer service. We'll come on to professional service in a moment. And they're being trained how to use the hoses and to drive the fire engine and they take part in the examination in a couple of months time and if they pass the examination they will then become firemen and they can go out on coals so we stopped to look at the fire engines as you would and they in the background you can see them practicing and then uh, we were given a talk by one of the firemen now our next stop along the way, we're getting towards Saturday lunchtime now as I take you through this two-day quick tour of Weiringen in Germany, near to Stuttgart. We then went to the new fire station, which is situated a few miles outside Weiringen and services five villages in the area. It's got a force of 63 firemen, and these are obviously their lockers, and the uh, fire station itself is run by a lady. So out of 63 fire people, seven are ladies and the chief of the fire brigade is a lady too. So just for statistics. Now, the uh, fire station has a tower, a lookout tower, if you will. And one of the uh, tests of any fireman, or this might be an apocryphal story, is that you should be able to climb the tower. Um, because if you can't climb the tower, you can't be a fireman. So we looking at the area around Weimlingen in Germany near Stuttgart. And these are photographs taken from the top of the tower. And the next photograph, you can see more trees. <laughs> and in the one after that, you can see the chairman of the training committee, uh, complete with name badge, actually climbing to the top of the tower. So I could be a fireman. I qualify because I got to the top of the tower. And behind me uh, is Zilka who I say is a counsellor in Weimaringen and was hosting us for the weekend. The beauty of this is you actually stay with a family within Weimaringen and you're learning about the German way of life. So everything that we did was genuine. It's not going to stay in a hotel and go sightseeing. This is being taken around the local area by somebody who actually lives there. And uh, Zilka has been over to devise us uh, to join Angelica and I. Uh, several times and this is the first time we went to stay with Zilka. There is the mayor and of course with him is Simon who as I said earlier organizes everything from the UK. Now I'm just going to stop screen sharing and come back 
and uh, make sure that you're still with me. And uh, right, okay. So that was it. That's basically uh, what happens on a weekend in Valrigan, on a twinning weekend, when people actually get together and uh, share cultures because you've actually got people who speak French, people who speak German, and people who speak English. Now, this is question time. When you get an English person, a French person, and a German person together, what language do you think they speak? I'll take any guesses at all uh, as to uh, what language you think is spoken when an English person, a French person, and a German person get together. Well, as you already know the answer, the answer is English. And Basically, English is the business, business language and virtually every person in Germany speaks English and majority of people in France speak English too. Both of them as a second language. Uh, now, it's helpful to be able to converse in French and German. So I do speak both, uh, not fluently, but enough to be able to understand people and enough for them to be able to understand me. So we've gone beyond la porte, la fenêtre, etc or dust tour, uh, we can actually converse with each other. Twinning weekends are fascinating, uh, and it's a way to, to get away from your own culture, leave behind the internet, leave behind your own television, and get to know people. It's real life networking, but it's designed to actually bring three countries closer together. Now you may ask what's going to happen next year when England leave the EU. Well, the EU is a political and financial construct, and it will not affect town twinning in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we'll be going to Mayenne in France next year. As I say, that's a few hundred miles south of Paris. And then year after that, uh, our guests from Birmingham and Mayenne will be coming to join us. Okay, now let me go back whilst I continue talking to that page and I can give you an idea, I think, of why this works so well. I'm just gonna show this for a second. It's not just about people talking. Uh, and if you're joining me at the moment, I'm explaining our weekend and showing photographs. If you want to go full screen, please do. Um, and I'm gonna come back and bring the photographs in momentarily and I'll bring them up to the screen and we can continue. One of the things that uh, Mayenne and Weiblingen have in common is music and devices as well. So orchestras travel, in this case from France to Weiblingen and from England to Weiblingen. And during the course of an evening a meal which has got to be described as extraordinary because it's absolutely fantastic. Um, there is a concert, and the beginning of the concert was a group of young musicians from France, all of whom are learning music. This is their first year of learning music and playing within an orchestra. Then they were followed by food, and then by our mayor, that's our mayor Andy Geddes giving a speech, and then the orchestra itself there. This is the orchestra from Yezi, um, and we are entertained with live music throughout the evening. Now, this photograph is very special. This is the Devizes Orchestra, the Mayen Orchestra, the Weiblingen Orchestra, and children in local schools in Vlamingen who are actually learning music. So the youngest player in this 140 piece orchestra was eight years old. And uh, they gave a fantastic concert throughout the night. And that is uh, Margaret. And we've gone through the pictures now. So music is the centerpiece of any twinning evening. And it brings everybody together. Um, and on Sunday, we've not got Sunday's photographs posted yet, so I can spare you that. On Sunday, we went to visit uh, the television tower, which was built in 1956, and gives a panoramic view of all around Stuttgart and Weiblingen, and uh, it was fantastic. 
to do that. Now, in the other photographs, which I can't show you, which is the prize exchange of presents, um, what actually happened was that we're actually watching football at the same time. Because if you're not aware of it, the World Cup is on at the moment. And I just want to mention this um, because we don't get to say this often. Well, not too often anyway. England are in the World Cup. We qualified. And England won their first match last night, 2-1. So we now have three points on the board, two matches to play in this particular group section of before we get to the knockout. Uh, so hello to Corinda. So we are, well, normally when we take, place, take part in any international competition, we always draw the first match. The fact that Gareth Southgate's teams actually won this means that we can look forward to the rest of the World Cup tournament in Moscow or Moscow uh, and stand a chance of actually getting to knockout stages and playing our part in what is uh, a spectacle. Ah, right, okay. And uh, Corinda watched the match too. Uh, when Corinda says it was a dirty match, what he means was that um, during the course of the match, the aim is to score goals and to stop people scoring goals. And uh, one of our international forwards, uh, Mr. Kane, was in the opposition penalty area waiting for a cross to come over. And he was unceremoniously tackled and thrown to the ground before the ball went into the air. Ostensibly, the referee didn't see this, and neither did the video assistant referee, who can see everything. And you have to believe that there was something going on. But because we won 2 1, we can be magnanimous and not worry about it all, and uh, just say that we're very happy to go to the next match later this week and uh, play our part in the World Cup. Um, and just to say that I'm, I support Burnley in uh, the English Premiership. That's the one that Manchester United and Manchester City are in, and Burnley are in seventh place. And our goalkeeper uh, was on the pitch at the World Cup, and if anything happens to goalkeepers one and two, he may well appear in goal, which is quite an honour. So we're talking about the World Cup. We're talking about the fact that England won 2-1, and it was an excellent game. Uh, from England's point of view, and we're looking forward to the other matches. Uh, now, I was gifted on Father's Day uh, some liquid refreshment to drink during each match, so I shall enjoy a beer and um, with each match and drink to the success of the English team. I also have some chocolates, some celebration chocolates, which I might save until the final. Although the person who gifted them to me has said that if we lose the final, they would like the chocolates back. But I think he was joking. And uh, Corinda saying that he supports Tunisia. Well, I, I, I can, well, yes, um, I've recorded that. I don't necessarily see. Uh, no, I don't support Tunisia. I've got, if I was a stick of rock, I've got England written through the middle of me. And uh, I support my home country uh, of England um, because this is something that we do rather well. So I celebrate the fact that England are playing well in Moscow. Right. OK, so we had a look at twinning. We had a look at the memories. Oh, just to say, uh, I want this on the video, that all the photographs you saw earlier were taken by my partner, Angelica, uh, during the course of the weekend. And uh, I did ask permission first to show them, but they will be in the video now. So we can actually show that video to people who are actually on the weekend or want to know more about twinning. And we can describe exactly what goes ahead on the twinning weekend. Uh, the highlight was the Saturday night with the four orchestras playing um, and uh, the dinner, which was just absolutely memorable is the good word for the dinner on that evening. Um, next twinning is next June. And uh, I hope to bring you photographs of that one uh, in a year's time. So come back here in a year's time. Now, 
something important which I must do, uh, getting back to live video for a moment, is that tomorrow, fingers crossed, sees the launch of the discoverability engine. Word of an explanation. Uh, the live video hub, uh, which started about six weeks ago, now has 149 broadcasters of uh, shows broadcasting there between 15 and 20 shows every day and we are live on the hub today and, and so 15 other people and the thing about that is that if you go to the video hub and you just see all the videos you don't know who's who so rj has designed what we're what rj has christened uh discoverability now to use discoverability is simple and straightforward all you need to do is to pick the category if you pick the category then you can actually then see all the shows in that category you can see a show card you can see a description you can see who's involved you can see which day of the week the show is on everything that you need to know about that show is in one place you can then click a link and go directly to the page the business page or you can click another link and if that page has a messenger bot like we do then you can contact the messenger bot and get in correct direct contact with the people who run the page this is a breakthrough not since the days of blab have we been able to find shows by category starting tomorrow you would just be able to search for shows by category. Now, what needs to happen over the next week or so is for you to register your show on the hub. So what I'm doing at the moment is to call all live video broadcasters who broadcast on the hub. As I say, currently 149 shows on there and Register your shows and get found. And I've forgotten to say that you need a list link. So if you have a show on the live video hub, could you please, as soon as possible, I know many of you have, so thank you for that. RJ and I will be viewing it tomorrow. Uh, the link to put your show onto uh, the discoverability engine is in the post below. So say so hello to Brigetti and Brigetti and Corinda are talking to each other. If anybody just wants to join me on camera, then type guest and you can join me on camera. But please remember uh, to register your show on the live video hub so that people can find it. So hello to Cheryl, nice to see you. And uh, again, what I love is people talking to each other and I'm trying to sort of decide which comments to show on the screen. I love to show them all on the screen. I was on a show, I think it was last Thursday and uh, the comments were flying thick and fast. And uh, it was very difficult to keep up and that's the type of show that I like. Right, I'm just gonna check back on Angelica's page, just give me a moment uh, because I've given you a sense of how the day started out. Just let me refresh and see if any mo more photographs have actually appeared. Uh, no, we've only got two sets of photographs, so I'm going to stop sharing and come back to me. If you want to know what twinning is about, then you can catch the first part of this program. We've now switched into video mode to talk about live video. If you want to join me on camera, then please do type guest and you can become part of the show. Uh, and here's the discoverability engine. What do you need to know before you go and use it? Uh, it's basically, you need your show title, description, Date and time the show is on. Uh, okay, I'll come to your question in a minute, Corinda. Date and time the show is on and uh, everything about your show. So when people come to the discoverability engine, I'm getting used to saying that now, when they come to the discoverability engine, they'll be able to find your show. And I'll take a couple of questions at that point. So I'm back and the questions are, 
from Corinda has when did cross post right cross posting has been around on Facebook for quite a while um, live cross posting is only about six or seven weeks old and this is the ability to go live on a second page or even more when you go live on your own page and the live video hub has 149 shows on there and live video hub never broadcasts so we never post to any of those 149 pages so you can be securing the knowledge that you're not going to find things on your page you don't expect when, when we first started this people thought well i'm going to get 100 shows on my page i don't want that it's my page it is your page and we will never post to it right okay and now we come to the question uh right okay and Rajesh is saying excellent news on discoverability well yes rj is just simply the best when it comes to bots and talking of the lady uh Rajesh, oh i see right okay i'm my job has been uh, i'll post the question first uh when you get the from Brigetti, when you get the category selection from the bot it makes an auto selection for you but doesn't seem to let you check another category if it doesn't fit to which the reply is from rj Brigetti, we need a speciality shows category let me add that real quick now this is the beauty of, of bots that they can be it's not fixed in stone it can be edited Archie has designed the bot and it is very well designed and, and kudos for that. But it doesn't mean that that's the end story. This is the beginning. And the more people who register for the bot, and the more people who use the, the, the discoverability engine, the more refined it can become. And it's an ongoing process. And I love the way that Archie just reacts so quickly. So I'm going to catch up on the point. Uh, and Brigetti says live cross posting is fabulous. I totally agree with that. You're not going to get me to say anything else. And Brigitte says, thank you to RJ for taking swift action. And Lauren is saying, how much have I missed? Right, okay. You've missed uh, 32 minutes, but I can give you a cook's tour. I'll finish with the photographs if you stick around. But uh, I'm just back from a town twinning weekend, uh, which is where countries actually uh, get together the councils get together and arrange visits from one country to another and this year was Weibling in Germany Main in France and I'm in Devizen in England and we were the guests of Weibling and at the beginning of this show the first 10 minutes or so you will see a conducted tour of Weibling which is undertaken by the mayor and so the first part of the show was not technical it was me reminiscing about a fantastic weekend uh, which I'm still recovering from. So perhaps as well, I've got another day before this happens tomorrow, because of course tomorrow is myself and RJ. Uh, that's the wrong card, isn't it, RJ? I'm sorry. It will be myself and RJ, but we'll be talking about Live Video Hub and Discovery Engine and it shows six. I did make a new card. I've got to go and find it before tomorrow's show. Uh, all right okay and catching up with comments again for which i'm grateful so how much you missed uh first course now me reminiscing and then we sort of got into the, the discoverability side of things which we'll be covering in the show at 12 p.m eastern tomorrow myself and rj uh and corinda saying i agree and thank you rj so much rj is a geek wizard that's a good description uh and uh stephen is the best male host best european male host that's i in the uh, streaming awards uh the best male host uh was the uh, was not me but the best european host i was and am for the next 12 months and thank you cheryl cheryl saying she enjoyed the live on the jeff adams show yesterday i enjoyed it i always enjoyed broadcasting with jeff he is the most professional and friendly of broadcasters and we're fortunate enough to be on his show yesterday at 5 p.m. Eastern. I was joined by David Burroughs and by Raven Blair Glover. And we had a well of a time in about a half hour long show. And in the sort of 10 minutes in, you get a full explanation of what the live video hub is all about and all about TVSN as well. Um, so worth catching. It's in the Belivers group. Uh, if you just search for live video hub, you'll find it. If not, 
I'll, I think it's posted on the uh, live video hub page as well. But it was a, a great show. It's always a good show when when Jeff's involved because he manages to sort of – well, he is the best host bar none, uh, irrespective of anybody voting. He just is. And Bridget is saying, love it, uh, getting stuff fixed on the fly, only on live TV. Well, that's – that's the beauty of live because we can we can well in this case RJ can react pretty darn quickly and take a good idea on board. So we will have, uh, as RJ just said, we will we will have a speciality shows category uh, which will be fettled before the show tomorrow um, when we'll do a demonstration of the discoverability engine. Now, when we did the show last week. I just want to point this out. Um, when we did the show last week, we were on the uh, Be Live in Five page, and this this is pertinent to everybody who does cross posting. We're on the Be Live in Five page, and uh, you can see how many people are watching live. What we discovered partway through the show is that we're only being watched by one person. We thought, well, that can't be right. So just a pointer, when you're live on your own page, the view account only relates to the people viewing live on your page. So I'd like to say hello to everybody who's watching on the live video hub, to everybody who's watching on the US hub run by Fonz in Cambridge in the UK, to A Little White Lie run by Karen, and to Cheryl, uh, who runs her network as well. There are about eight separate networks all of which are independent and then there's the live video hub which brings all the shows together and i love the fact that we all get on famously and help each other um i'm just going back to the comments all right and corinda's saying if you missed the show last night corinda you'll find it in belivers you'll find it on the live video hub you'll find it on my profile you'll find it on be live in five so that show has been shared everywhere uh, and we'll continue to use it. I'm actually downloading that show and going to use part of it. I'm going to repurpose it and I'm going to use it to promote the live video. hub. Uh, so I'm hoping to get a few clips out of it, uh, three, four, five minute clips, which we can use to actually explain to people what the live video hub is all about. I've had an idea for a show and I don't know what you think, Cheryl. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, we do the Lime Video Hub show on Thursdays. What I'd like to do, and I'll contact everybody personally, but I just throw it out there as an idea, is for anybody who hosts a Facebook Live Hub is to actually get together and talk about it. And let's cross-promote each other's hubs. Uh, because the thing is that at the moment, um, cross-posting, is the thing to be doing if you want a, a stable audience if you want to increase your audience then cross posting is the thing to do live cross posting works far better than any other way of going live on facebook at the moment uh, well apart from having jeff adams hosting the show that beats everything into a cocked hat so what i'm going to suggest is this that we have a, a special thursday show and get all the hosts of the hubs together talking about it and promoting their hubs. Uh, so if you've got any thoughts on that, then please let me know and uh, we'll move that one forward and get that going. Not this week, too short notice, but hopefully next week. Uh, and look, message from Lauren. Lauren, I'm starting to host a joint Facebook Live with another blogger. Would live cross, would, would live cross posting enable us to go live on both pages? Yes, it, right. This is the essence of live cross posting. Yes. Basically, uh, I'll send you um, after this, I'll give you the instructions to do it between the two of you. Uh, essentially, what happens is that page A sends a link to page B. Page B says, Yes, please. The two of you are then connected for cross posting, takes about 60 seconds. Then you create your be live broadcast exactly as normal a schedule broadcast to your facebook business page nothing changes this is not a be live thing this is a facebook thing thank you facebook then before the show 
you go to edit the post on Facebook, you press settings, cross posting, click page B, save. That's it. Done. 30 seconds. And when you go live on your page, you go live on their page at exactly the same time. Uh, <laughs> right. And Cheryl has a hub as well. And shout out to Cheryl. Um, and Corinda, have I missed any comments? This is possible. Ah, latest news from RJ. It's fixed now. Out of the category on the end, go through again and let me know if it works for you. This is fantastic. Absolutely amazing. Oh, RJ. Wow. Absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, now. What else can we talk about today? Um, I talked about training. I talked about that. I talked about that. If you want to give me a topic, then please do so. Okay. And uh, Lauren, taking your comment. Nikki Williams, watch this on replay. The instructions. All oh, right. You've tagged Nikki. Instructions for live crop posting, which will show. Right. Okay. Yep. It will allow both your pages to go live at the same time. I'll give instructions at the end of this show. Uh, for you to follow up on that and just as a hint just a subtle hint uh, as well as going live on each other's pages you can go live on the live video hub too just say you don't have to but you could do um, we're now at 149 shows I'm waiting for 150th show uh, which will be later today when uh, hopefully J Jason uh, puts conversations live on there. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm actively recruiting people. If you want to be on the live video hub, just message me your page, link, your URL, and say hello to John, uh, who joined us. Message me your URL. John, you have missed. Well, Brigetti will tell you what you've missed, and RJ as well. I actually did a presentation. The first 15 minutes of the show was dedicated to the twinning trip to Vineringham this weekend and the photographs by Angelica. Uh, so it's a pleasure to show those. Uh, right, Lauren, if you message me your uh, URL, I could, we can do that. The only, the, the only requirement, well, you're already on BeLive.tv, so that's it. You're in. You're in. Um, and, of course, you can, once you're on the Live Video Hub, you can then join the discoverability engine, trademark RJ Redden, and people will be able to find your show. The, the uh, discoverability engine is not just about finding people finding you on the Live Video Hub. It's about using the Live Video Hub to find you on your page. So uh, it goes way beyond uh I want in views on the live video. What we want is people to find you on the live video hub and then go and watch you on your page and then occasionally come back and find another show and another show uh, until they've got a favorite show every day and uh, they're watching and engaging in live video. And when I, well, <laughs> thank you. You're spoiling us. I think that the, the key to the, the B Live since B Live got going because this is the B Live TV official venture is that B Live know what social media is about. Uh, both uh, Daniel and Sophia are on social media, in social media, know about social media, understand Facebook, understand live video, and they're able to surprise us now and again with the wonderful features on BeLive.tv that we never expected. If you think of how this was 12 months ago, we now have a fantastic platform uh, because the video quality, the sound quality, the features that we can use are just, well, they're the best on Facebook, has to be said. Um, and now with the work that RJ is doing on the discoverability engine, uh, and the live video hub every joining in, we're at a point where, if you, what is it, Gladwell, the tipping point? I'm, I'm looking forward to the tipping point for the live video hub where the numbers keep on increasing, increasing. As I said on, on, um, on Jeff's show last night, uh, at the moment, if you want to watch television, there's nothing on, 
you want to watch Netflix and there's nothing on, where do you go? Well, the answer to that is, and of course I'm biased, is that you go to the live video hub and you can search by category from tomorrow and you can find the show which interests you. Now, you're not then watching a video. You are live and interacting. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of Be Live. Be Live works because it's social. It's been designed to be social from right from the beginning when we just had solo, going back to October 2016, we could see and interact with the comments. It's grown along with that in that now we have, uh, I just, just excuse me for a moment, I just want to set something up. There are features coming out all the time. So I just want to point out that all the photographs today are photographs by Angelica Davy. Um, that scrolling is, is a recent thing, uh, feature that's coming and it's using it sparingly. It is just so powerful. Yeah. Now you're going to be asking what photographs. So let me screen share for a moment. I'm not going to go through all of them. But just to give a flavor to uh, people who joined in late, just a minute, let me get, um, this is live. I want to get this right. And I'm going to go to the Chrome tab. I'm going to share the tab, share. And I'm going to bring the photographs up. And I'm going to go to the first photograph. Bear with me a moment. I'm setting things up. Uh, hopefully, this will work. Uh, all right. Okay, I didn't show all the photographs. So I'm going to come, this is, I'm going to continue just for a moment or two. Uh, I'm going to bring that screen share up. And the photographs are by Angelica Davy. And this is our trip to Weilingen in Germany, together with guests from Mayen in France. This is a training weekend. Started 50 years ago, goes on every year. We visit each other's countries. And uh, we have a lunch, a, a town hall lunch on the Saturday, and this is the lunch itself as I switch over, and you best full screen on this. You can see on the left there in blue, uh, Andreas Heskey, who's the mayor of Weimlingen, explaining uh, effusively uh, what we're going to be doing in the afternoon. Then you've got the mayor from Yezi in Italy. You've got our mayor from Devizes in the UK, and then you have the mayor of Mayenne. And they give a little speech and exchange presents. And I know for a fact that there is wine involved, French wine and German wine. What could be better? And they open the bags and take a look around and display. Now, those bees which they're holding uh, are part of the 2019 uh, venture, which Vimingen is setting up at the moment. So that's the reason for that. Now, there's a gentleman speaking. You can catch him. He's in the middle of the photograph. That's me. And behind me are uh, the chairman of the training committees, Joel from France and uh, Mark from Germany. And I was giving quite an animated speech about what training means to me. And then the chairman exchanged gifts. Uh, and uh, you see there uh, that I, you can't see my mouse, can you? That uh, Mark is actually putting a badge on. I gave them both a badge to wear and they both wore it during the day, which is absolutely brilliant. And with pride, you see, wearing the badge with pride. And that brings us on the, to the end of the screen. So that's where I was this weekend. I was in Weimlingen in Germany. And uh, it's fantastic to spend the weekend there and to get to know, stay at the house of uh, a German host. Uh, from Friday night till Monday morning uh, to be wake up with speaking French, German and English uh, over the breakfast table and really enjoying getting to know each other. People become firm friends and visit each other year after year and there are new people joining in all the time. Uh, if you've got a twinning organisation, I would actually love to hear about it. So that's a bit of the uh, the weekend just gone. And uh, it was, as you saw, I had a blast because as chairman, I can get up and say what I want. And uh, to any Brits watching, what I said was this. Uh, 
next year, March 19th, 2019, we may be leaving the EU, which is a political and financial organization. We will still, however, be twinning after 2000, March 2019. We will be Europeans after 2019. Irrespective of what our politicians do, irrespective of anything at all, friendships formed through twinning will last and endure and will go on seeing each other. Well, I'd love to say for the next 50 years, but certainly for the next 10 years or so. And uh, that's the beauty of twinning. Now, if you've got any questions about twinning or about the discoverability engine or about the live video hub, then please do ask. And if you, uh, Questions coming in. I think I'm at the top. Uh, okay, I'm just seeing Erin's post a photo somewhere. So let's just recap, shall we? Live Video Hub is open to everybody, and you're welcome to join. Just send me your page URL, and I can get things underway. Text me into so. Uh, I was going to talk about shows on the hub, but I'm going to leave that until Thursday. Suffice it to say, at the moment, there are 20 shows a day on the hub and uh, a wide variety. In fact, there are 63 categories, which uh, RJ has whittled down to six. Down twinning, you've seen two thirds of the photograph. Um, that's hopefully they give you some information on what happens on the twinning weekend and how involved uh, it can be, involving it can be. You know more about that we're twinning with Weimingen in Germany and Mayen in France. And just to answer a question I posed earlier, when you get an English lady, a French lady, and a German lady at breakfast, the language they speak is English because it's their second language in France and in Germany. English is their second language. And uh, as an Englishman, I'm grateful for that, but I do speak French and German. So that was memories of Weimann, Weiblingen over the weekend. Um, don't forget to register your show for the uh, discoverability engine. There's no time limit on this, but, and this is a big but, okay. Do you know what happens if you register on the discoverability engine this week? If you register on the discoverability engine this week, your show, supposing somebody comes along and says, I'm interested in business coaching, or I'm interested in uh, talk shows, if you put your show in this week, you'll always be first, second, or third in the list. So if there are 11... <laughs> RJ knows what happens. <laughs> well, you, you know definitively what happens, and perhaps we'll explain it again tomorrow. But I just want to make the point that if you get in early and actually register your page now, uh, then... You're on the red. You're on the discoverability engine, and you are top of the queue. You're actually going to show at the top of the page. You're going to be first. So, in terms of discoverability, now is the time to actually get on board and uh, join in the engine. Now, I said at the top of the show, time guest to join me on this camera. Uh, didn't happen, but I'm grateful for everybody who's actually commented and joined in today. You made it such a fun show. Uh, this has been Talk Show with Stephen, and uh, I thoroughly enjoy uh, doing this, as you can probably tell. Um, and, well, what you should do tomorrow, if you've got chance, is at 12 p.m. tomorrow, myself and RJ, or more correctly, RJ and I, will be talking about the discoverability engine and giving a live demonstration. I've got my fingers crossed here because RJ knows what's going to happen. Uh, a live demonstration of the discoverability engine and other things may happen according to how things have gone over the last seven days, how many people have filled in the form to actually be on the discoverability engine. We'll discover that tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. in the UK. We'll be on Be Live in 5. We'll be on the live video hub. You can find us in nine different places on the hub. And just to repeat some a brilliant idea, or not a brilliant idea. Okay, and RJ has just posted the link to register your show 
and get it while it's hot. Do it now. You'll be in the lead. You'll be top of the shop. Uh, you'll be featured on this discoverability engine. And we are going to do quite a bit of marketing because we're not just – we're going to go outside the Be Live arena and bring people in who enjoy watching live video and shout, tell them about your shows. Because this – I know. I thought another thought just occurred to me. Dangerous, I know. But as well as being a discoverability engine for um, finding shows, it's also a prime marketing engine, marketing engine for actually promoting your shows on your behalf. So we'll be using this not only to for people to find you, but to tell people where you can find they find you, and we'll have the ability to use your show cards. The information we've given you about the show, you've given us about the show. In fact, everything that you filled in, we can tell people about and we can give you publicity all over Facebook. So watch this space and definitely be with us at 12 o'clock tomorrow. Now, I started this show talking about camera confidence. Um, and if somebody comes in at the end, uh, Everybody who goes live on video for the few moments before the show, there is a nervous energy. And that nervous energy is what fuels the start of the show. It's how you get off to a heck of a start. We know that when you start a live video show, it's we used to do this. really just me on camera so practice is the thing and we have late breaking news just to show that this is live the news is in from john senegal oh wow i misread that first john wow that's the second unexpected result of the day i'm going to go and watch the replay this world cup is providing upsets Imagine that you're being hosted by your German host. Imagine it's Saturday night, Sunday night rather, and they're having a barbecue. And the barbecue is to celebrate Germany being in the World Cup with me so far. The guests start to arrive at five o'clock and the men go to the television lounge on the first floor and they watch the football and then this uh, sound appears is heard by everybody at the party and you know that germany's opposition mexico have just scored now it was supposed to be a walk in the park for germany so there we are there's english guests at a German barbecue and Germany get beat. But did that get us down? No, it didn't. We are twinners and nothing gets us down. And we had a fantastic evening. And uh, well, that's it. So, to everybody who's watched today, thank you. Uh, thank you for all the comments. Thank you for all the questions. Uh, I look forward to being live tomorrow with RJ. I look forward to being live with Mr. Upton, that's Mr. John Upton, on Thursday at 10 a.m. in the UK and RGA tomorrow. And I'm hoping uh, to be joined on Thursday by uh, by Erin, fingers crossed. Thank you for watching. Have a great evening or rest of the day, depending on where you are in the world. It's been my pleasure to chat with you today and to show you something about my twinning weekend, I'll stop mentioning it now. And I'll see you all again tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern, myself and RJ. Take care. See you all soon. Bye for now. That's a wrap.